come to church. My name is Michelle Hopp, and I serve the Poinette Inch in Arlington United Methodist Churches as their pastor. And our worship leaders today are Michelle Coltmans, who is helping us with the videography and also as our liturgist, and her daughter, Melanie Coltmans, who puts everything together behind the scenes and loads it up onto the YouTube channel. So grateful for both of these ladies. And today we are going to be thinking about something a little different that we probably don't think about too often. Our earthly bodies, which Paul called tents, and then also our heavenly bodies, which he called houses. Would you rather live in a tent or a house? So let's join together in a spirit of worship as we say our opening prayer together. God, your love never ends. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, give strength. To all who have sinned, give mercy. To all who sorrow, give your peace. We offer our honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And now I'd like to invite Michelle Coltmans up and she will read our scripture. Our scripture reading for today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 14 to chapter 5, verses 10 from the Living Bible. We know that the same God who brought the Lord Jesus back from death will also bring us back to life again with Jesus and present us to him along with you. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our inner strength in the Lord is growing every day. These troubles and sufferings of ours are, after all, quite small and won't last very long. Yet this short time of distress will result in God's richest blessings upon us forever and ever. So, we do not look at what we can see right now, the troubles all around us, but we look forward to the joys in heaven which we have not yet seen. The troubles will soon be over, but the joys to come will last forever, for we know that when this tent we live in now is taken down, when we die and leave these bodies, we will have wonderful new bodies in heaven, homes that will be ours forevermore, made for us by God himself and not by human hands. How weary we grow of our present bodies. That is why we look forward eagerly to the day when we shall have heavenly bodies that we shall put on like new clothes. For we shall not be merely spirits without bodies. These earthly bodies make us groan and sigh. But we wouldn't like to think of dying and having no bodies at all. We want to slip into our new bodies so that these dying bodies will, as it were, be swallowed up by everlasting life. This is what God has prepared for us, and as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. Now we look forward with confidence to our heavenly bodies. Realizing that every moment we spend in these earthly bodies is time spent away from our eternal home in heaven with Jesus. We know these things are true by believing, not by seeing. And we are not afraid, but we are quite content to die, for then we will be at home with the Lord. So our aim is to please him always in everything we do, whether we are here in this body or away from this body and with him in heaven. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged and have our lives laid bare before him. Each of us will receive whatever he deserves for the good or bad things he has done in his earthly body. And our last scripture for today is from John chapter 14 verses 1 through 4 from the NIV Bible. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. you rather live in a tent or a house well I personally would vote to live in a house because I am not a camping person when I see tents and air mattresses I want to run the other way 
I wish I were a camping person. I want to be a camping person. And I know that a lot of you enjoy camping. But the thought of sleeping on the hard ground in a tent does not appeal to me at all. And maybe that's because I grew up in Chicago where there was more concrete than grass. Or perhaps it was because my Chicago Girl Scout troop never went camping. Or maybe it was because when I finally went on my first camping trip as an adult, it was such a miserable experience that it became my last camping trip. See, Rob was a drummer in a country rock band, and shortly after we were married, he and his bandmates had a rare weekend off. So they decided they wanted to go on a camping trip. We were all going to go tubing down the Apple River in northern Wisconsin, and the tubing part was so much fun. That was a great, great time. We floated down the river while drinking beverages and talking and singing and laughing and just enjoying the beautiful scenery and the relaxation. But as soon as we returned back to our campground, Rob and I set up our little canvas pop-up tent or pup tent that we just purchased at Kmart. It started to rain. And then it began to pour. And before long, thunderstorms were raging through our campground all night long. And I, being a beginner camper from Chicago, didn't understand that you're not supposed to touch the top of the inside of the tent when it's raining outside. And for some reason, I was so fascinated by how the tent could keep the rain out because it was only fabric. I just kept fixating on this, and as Rob was sleeping next to me, and he had already told me, whatever you do, don't touch the top of the tent, which of course made me think, I need to touch the top of the tent. So. He was asleep. I figured, you know, he can't be right on this, you know. So anyways, it's pouring out, you know, thunder, lightning. And I touched the top of the tent more than once. And before you know it, rain is coming through into our little pup tent, just completely saturating us and our blankets and our pillows and everything else. Rob woke up in a hurry. We were wet, we were cold, we were miserable, and I couldn't wait to get home to my nice, comfortable bed again. Where would you rather live? In a tent or a house? Well, in our New Testament reading today, the Apostle Paul taught us something about tents. He said, We know that if the tent we live in on earth is torn down, we have a building from God. It's a house that isn't handmade. It's eternal, and it's located in heaven. The Apostle Paul knew a lot about tents. Did you know that his original occupation was a tent maker? You see, it was the custom of Jewish boys to learn a trade from their father. And so just like Jesus learned carpentry from his father, Paul learned tent making from his father. And Paul grew up learning how to make tents, but then, because he was a very smart young lad, his father sent him away to Jerusalem as a young teenager to get the best Jewish education possible. Paul became a respected Jewish scholar, and as a young man, he became a zealous Jewish leader who oversaw the murders of many of the early Christians. The early Christians were followers of an organization or a movement called The Way. But after Paul experienced an episode of blindness and then an encounter with the resurrected Jesus Christ, he converted to Christianity. And this man who once hunted down and killed all these Christians was now himself a Christian. And this conversion made him so unpopular amongst the mainstream Jews that he was the target of death threats. So Jesus' disciples put him on a boat, sent him back home to Tarsus, to his mother and his father. And for the next 10 years, Paul lived there, probably working with his father in the family tent-making business. 
He made tents for 10 years before seriously re-entering his ministry. And in the book of Acts, we learn that Paul traveled to Corinth to continue his ministry, but he soon realized he needed money to support himself. So he needed to work. He needed a day job. So in Corinth, he met a married Christian couple, Aquila and Priscilla, and they worked in tent making. He moved into their home, and together they worked together to earn an income while teaching people about Jesus. Here's the Bible account from Acts 18. It says, In Corinth, Paul met Aquila and his wife Priscilla. Paul moved in with them, and they worked together in the common trade of tent making. But every Sabbath, he was at the meeting place, doing his best to convince both the Jews and the Greeks about Jesus. So Paul's day job basically was tent making. And this was a job that was in high demand in his day because many people lived in tents. There was a great need for skilled artisans who could not only make tents, but repair them. And in those days, tents weren't made of nice, lightweight fabric that was waterproof like we use today. Instead, they were often made by prickly, coarse goat hair. People would shave the hair from their goats and then use this hair. They would actually turn it in and they would spin it and then make it into yarn and then they would weave it and then they would make long panels and then they would sew the panels together and fashion this all into a tent. And the goat hair would make the tents waterproof. And tent makers would replace the worn areas, which, was, which were usually on the roof because of all the exposure to sun. And then they would put in new strips of goat hair, and then they would recycle the old strips and turn them into carpets or whatever they else, else they needed within the tent, maybe even the side curtains. So another name for one of these black goat tents was called the House of Hair. You'll read about the House of Hair from time to time in the Bible. So many people lived in tents or in houses of hair year-round, while other ones used them as portable tents when they traveled. And tent makers also made tents by cutting pieces of leather and fashioning them together. And scholars think that this is something that perhaps Paul specialized in. But Paul, of all people, he knew. He knew tents. He knew they were flimsy. He knew that they were temporary, that they didn't last forever, that they needed to be repaired, and that old places had to be, um, you know, repaired and uh, damaged sections had to be reworked. But when Paul wrote his letter to the Corinthians, was he literally talking about tents? When he said, we know that if the tent that we live in on earth is torn down, we have a building from God, Did he really mean that our whole life here on earth is one big camping trip? To which I would say, oh, please, God, don't make me camp all my life. Actually, you know, when Paul was talking about tents, he was talking about our bodies. Kind of an interesting analogy. Our bodies are kind of like a tent. They break down. Often we can get them fixed. If we have a bad knee, we can often get a knee replacement. We have a bad hip. We can get a hip replacement. If our heart doesn't work so well, we can have a heart bypass. There's ways that you can repair your body as it breaks down. But eventually, our body's been patched over and repaired over and over and over again until finally, it just gives out. Our bodies are weakened by disease, by injuries, by old age, and finally, by death. And just like tents are great for camping for those who love to camp, they don't hold up great when a storm comes crashing through. And our bodies are are pretty good tents and sometimes even last for 100 years or more, but eventually they break down. And sometimes, tragically, they break down early in our life. But the good news is that as followers of Jesus Christ, we are promised a new body in heaven. And Paul calls this body a house. 
And in heaven, as believers, we exchange our old tent-like body for a new house-like body. We even get an upgrade. Where would you rather live? In a tent or a house? Our resurrection bodies, they're solid and secure houses. Our resurrection bodies are everlasting. Nothing will destroy them. Nothing will destroy these new bodies of ours. Jesus also told his followers that we would live in a house once we got to heaven. In the Gospel book of John, Jesus said this, and I read this at almost every funeral also in memorial service. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I'm going to come back. I'm going to take you with me so that you may be where I am. So right now, we are living in our earthly body. We are living in a temporary structure like a tent. So what should we do about our tent while we're living on earth? Well, we should take care of it. Our tent, our body, but we shouldn't become too emotionally attached to it. It's not our permanent home. Instead, our heavenly home, our eternal body, that is our permanent home. Our heavenly home is not made by human hands. It's, it'll never fall apart. It'll never need repair. It will be perfect, and it will be beautiful. We will never be homeless. Our heavenly home will simply replace our earthly tent. The prophet Isaiah said, this body I inhabit is taken down and packed away like a camper's tent. So when the day comes when your tent is no longer your home, take Jesus' hand, fold up your tent, and go home with him. And you will live in a beautiful, perfect, heavenly house that will last forever. Amen. And now it's time to worship God through our financial offerings and tithes. Please continue to support our churches financially to help us support the people in our communities through our caring ministries. And you can mail your checks to the addresses you see on your screen. And now I'd like to send you out into your week with a blessing, with a benediction. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.